Hello, hello. How is it going? How's everybody doing? Yo, Rajiv. Man, I've lost a lot of it, man. I don't know if you could tell. But I have. I have lost weight. But yeah, home workouts will begin soon. Hey, Akshit. Hi. Hello. Good afternoon. How's it going? As you can tell, I just came fresh from the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Jesse, thank you so much for making the time to come here today. Uh, how's your no, day no, been no. overall? Dude, um I'd like to thank you for giving me this opportunity. You know, you're um not a lot of people actually ask me to do these kinds of things, so you're the first one to ask me to do an Instagram live. I'm so honored. Thank you. I'm I <laughs> Literally I was thinking so cuz uh, I came across your profile and I was thinking look I've been hearing her voice on the radio for the longest possible time and I don't what? think anyone has given her the opportunity to like speak so I was just like you know what let's 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 get to know Chassie and let's get to know all about her so thank you for making the time I'm super humbled to talk to someone like you uh let's get started Dude, so Chassie has been a radio <laughs> you sound like I'm really old what I mean longest possible time <laughs> I mean <laughs> you're not you're not you you <laughs> yeah, yeah you, we both are we both are <laughs> uh but Chessie has been a radio show host for TNL uh she has been an incredible part of my life especially driving to gym driving to work uh TNL has been a big part of my life as well so Chessie I want to get to know all about you for the people who are who will watch this now and watch this later on as well Who are you? What do you do? What makes you Chessy Cortez? <laughs> what a question. Okay, so um I am actually from the Philippines as you can see, but I have uh, a lot of people think that I'm Chinese just because of my eyes, I guess. Um but I'm from the Philippines. I've been in radio for about um do I'm making myself sound so old right now. Uh 16 years? <laughs> close to yeah. so if i if i had to add your add your experience i think you've uh 2 4 10 12 yeah, yeah close to about 16 years yep yeah exactly exactly so um and um i've been doing radio uh and tv for a really long time as well and i was given the opportunity to work here in sri lanka because my former boss um actually asked me if i was interested in you know uh joining a radio station here in the country actually TNL is my second um radio station so i said okay sure you go to tv and, first right yes so i'm like okay um i have no family of my own i'm not doing anything and i guess uh at that point in my life i was searching for something you know like something new and i knew that i would be able to get that you know when i live in another country and so that's why i'm here and uh, you know what's funny Sri Lankans and Filipinos have kind of similar culture. That's why I I'm I'm I love it here. Like I really love it here. It's my second home. We all love to have fun, go out and uh, and and uh make friends and uh we love to sing. Uh we also love to you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, so I'm studying in Australia, and I have a Filipino friend here as well. And yes, he he does like to have a lot of fun. <laughs> oh yes, we're fun-loving people. But you know what? Um, Sri Lankans are also very uh, accommodating and very nice. Like Sri Lankans will always try to help you if you really need help, and that is the reason why I really jive well with with you know Sh- Sri Lankans. there it's it's somewhat similar to the culture of the philippines so i'm happy i'm here <laughs> amazing yeah. and we're happy to have you trust me thank you thank you um yeah so that's pre- pretty much it i guess <laughs> yeah and that's amazing and i and i just want to ask like branching off uh, what you told me uh how did is media something that you wanted to get into all of your life or was it something you just stumbled upon and then it just became something that you loved okay funny story when i was a kid 
I wanted to be a doctor. When I was in high school, my mom wanted me to be a lawyer. Okay. And um, I had a, my ex boyfriend at that time, because we had this thing called unlimited call on, on cell phones and mobile phones. So we, we kept on talking and talking. And then all of a sudden he goes, Hey, you actually have a nice voice. Why don't you try radio? So radio never came across my mind. Like if, if, if I wanted to join media, I would have wanted to be number one, an MTV VJ, which I actually auditioned for when I was younger and I was terrible. And, or number two, a news reader. And I ended up in radio. And he actually is uh, the reason why I got into radio. My ex-boyfriend, shout out. <laughs> Thank you for opening the doors for me. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but it never crossed my mind when I was young. I never thought that I'd be able to, you know, um, do radio and, and talk and talk. See, the thing about um, radio personalities is that they always assume that we just keep on talking and we're very outgoing and we're, we're extroverts. To be honest, most of us are not. Um, you put us in a crowd, we'd rather be left alone in a corner and enjoy our own world. Um, that's why sometimes when you, like when we go out and then people say hi to us and especially people we don't know, you know, like sometimes we're like, huh, it's just, we just do that. And then they, oh my God, she's such a snob. No, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, really are not, it's just that we're not used to, you know, like mingling because we're, like, especially for radio personalities, we're so used to being closed in a small room and we talk as if we have a lot of people, you know, in front of us. We're kind, of, we're actually used to that. So when you put us out there, we're like, oh, it's kind of awkward, but it's okay. Yeah. So I, yeah, I can relate to that as well. Like I'm quite the introverted person. As soon as I say this, I'm sure everyone will be like, "Don't lie, Sharon." But like I am quite introverted in the nature where because I do public speaking, I do this. Uh, I'm very active in terms of social media and like workshop facilitation and stuff like that. But as soon as I'm done with that, I'm just like, don't talk to me. Like, just don't yeah. talk to me. Like, I just need to be to myself in my corner, like doing me. <laughs> so it's just like, I completely get that. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, it's, not, it's not that we're snobs, okay? It's just that sometimes, you know, we just kind of want our own space, I guess. So Absolutely. Because yeah. you're talking so, for so long as well. You just need that break to be like, just disconnect at that point. And I, and I want to talk about, like, you, you know, you mentioned that your mom wanted you to be a lawyer. So that's mm -hmm. something that I speak to all of my guests about as well. This cultural and social stigma that we're used to in Sri Lanka. Um, for me, personally, just so that you know me as well, uh, I have a single mom. So she has gone through domestic abuse for five years and she went through divorce and got me out of that situation. And she always told me to pursue what made me happy. Um, she obviously, when I was confu confused, tried to like align me to do certain things uh, just because I didn't personally know. So I tried different things that she told me as well, but she never forced me to do it. But we also live in a social uh, and cultural situation where parents uh, think they know what's best for you, but they, they mm -hmm. do it with the best intentions. They really do it with the best intentions. But the thing is, people grow up uh, living a life that they didn't want to live. And they look back and be like, damn, I'm actually not too happy in the situation mm -hmm. that I'm in. So what was that like for you in terms of your relationship with your mom and telling her, no, actually, I'm going to pursue media? She did not take it well at first. Uh, uh, because for college, you have to um, take an exam, right? So I actually graduated from University of the Philippines. They're at home of the radicals. No. So, um, and I, I actually um, chose political science because my mom really wanted me to become, um, you know, a lawyer. And then um, I didn't know that I was going to pass because it was actually really tough to go to get inside that university. Um, I didn't know that I was going to pass. So when I passed, I told my mom, I said, hold on. Can we hit pause before you, before you enroll me? Because... I don't think I feel comfortable with political science. And then my mom was like, why, what, what do you want? And I said like, ma, I know I can argue, but I don't think I'd wanna argue with other people for the rest of my life. And I said, what about I try mass communications? My mom didn't talk to me for two days. So Damn. it was my dad. Yeah, cold my, shoulder. my dad actually told me. Yeah, I gave, she gave me a cold so, uh, shoulder. And um, um, it took her like 
a year to really accept the fact that I really wasn't going to pursue law. Um, we had, a, um, as a matter of fact, we had a bunch of, of school activities. She didn't want to join. She didn't want to watch me. I'm like, are you not proud of me? So yeah, it took her a year to fully, you know, grasp that and, and accept the fact that I, I'm not going to pursue law. It's kind of weird, but I'm just lucky though, because in the Philippines, if you're not familiar, most of the parents there always ask their kids to pursue nursing. And I'm lucky that my mom didn't ask me to pursue nursing. Uh, that is, if you say, yeah. have, you, have you heard about it? Like when you say Filipino, Yeah, so my, my friend's <laughs> sister is actually a nurse. Mm, see? Yeah. So if you watch Jokoy, <laughs> you know, the comedian Jokoy, what he's saying about Filipino moms wanting their kids to pursue nursing is actually true. And I'm just happy that she didn't Yeah. But yeah, and it's, a, it's, it's a very conservative... Go ahead, um, sorry. You know, it's a very conservative um, kind of, you know, like uh, culture as well. So um, they, they want you to have a stable job. They want you to have a title. Because to them, they think that you having a stable job and having a title means success so I get yeah it. absolutely and uh, that's the generation they lived in as well right and they're they're okay with uh pursuing that and kind of climb the career ladder and doing that thing but the thing is with technology and with how the whole ecosystem globally has changed so many more mm -hmm. opportunities have come out in terms of creativity in, uh, like for example what you're doing is more creative arts like what you're doing in speaking and hosting shows and all of those things is creative arts um which has become a career now you know um, and I just want to touch on, there's so many boys and girls who want to do speaking. So I've had, uh, I think you're like the 108th guest I've had in like 23 days. And, <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, the thing is, I never, um, I didn't uh, base it on uh, who you were in terms of social standing or following or anything. I've had my own followers on board as well. And some of them are just like, wow, this is the opportunity I get to speak because I always want to speak and help other people or just like have a conversation. But they're always nervous because their parents would judge them because it's not the career that they want to go forward in. So to those people who are nervous and who see you and be like, oh, wow, she's like, she's done it. She like proved them wrong. She's done it. She's, she's happy with the, uh, with the job she has. If you had a one-on-one -on -one with any of those young guns or even people who are, ha are unhappy with the job they have now, and they want to pursue something when it comes to speaking or pursuing their passions. What would you tell them? Uh, it may sound cliche, but it's actually true based on experience. Uh, if you are doing something, if you have a job now, and you, the job makes you feel like a job, okay? And you're not happy. Why don't you try something else? Because I'm telling you, if you're stuck in a job that feels like a job, you'll be very miserable for the rest of your life. A job is supposed to feel like it's a hobby. You, you know, you, you love going to work. You love what you do. Otherwise, you'd be very miserable. And that's going to cause, you know, um, that's going to trigger change in how you deal with other people. Because you're miserable in your job, you tend to, you know, blame it on other people because sometimes, most of the time, actually, you don't think that it is your fault. You feel like it is your mom's fault, your dad's fault, your employer's fault, your, your office mate's fault. But actually, it is your fault for, for choosing to be there. So if you feel like you're unhappy, then maybe you should try to evaluate and, you know, uh, try to pursue something else. But of course, you have to be very smart about it as well because it's easier said than done. So for example, if you have like a steady job now, but you're very unhappy, but you want to venture in, say, for example, entrepreneurship, right? You want to, you know, start your own business. You don't leave your job cold. Like, don't cut it off just like that. You have to make a plan, okay? So you have got to make sure that once you leave your steady job, you'd be able to stand on your own two feet. You know, it's, it's about planning as well. You have to be very, very smart about it. Um, and you have to do, as a matter of fact, you have to do research. And you have to ask other people who are in the field that you're interested in, you know, how they did it, 
what do you think that what what do you think the challenges are um how can i be successful in this field before you even jump into it you know what i mean like i i know it's very cliche and they they say you know like why don't you just go i mean like yeah why don't you just dive into it but yo are you going to survive are you going to you know swim back up after you dive into it you know so just you have to be very smart about it Absolutely and I think like uh keep the passion going because if it's something that makes you happy and your parents want you to do this job or this line of work do the job don't quit it have your side hustle going or your passion going reach it up to a point where you have clients you have a portfolio you can show your parents yes. that you're giving in a revenue stream and then you're just like yes now I have an active decision that I can make to quit my job and pursue my passion you know yeah, um exactly. and I Absolutely and I and I want to also ask uh, Chasi I'm I advocate for mental health a lot um I've been suicidal personally three times in my life I've been going for therapy for over a year and a half um it's really changed my life and that's because it has been a more open conversation in Australia as opposed to Sri Lanka we are changing things people are talking about it education systems will change eventually uh, but with the right push but for people who are going through something right now and have there been any instances in your life where you were just like super anxious or super down about certain things in your life you don't have to talk about it uh, per, you don't have to talk about the situations if you don't want to i i will never ask you of that but in in terms of how did you get out of those situations personally because you're always talking on the radio you're always speaking 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 but what are the times you talk to yourself one of the times you give yourself that self love and how do you exactly get out of those situations well uh i have okay number 1 uh being away from my family for a really long time and living alone in a in a very foreign country um makes you feel anxious uh there i do admit that there have been a lot of times that i felt really depressed and um even to a point where in i just sit down right and then all of a sudden i'm like what am i doing you know it it happens and 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 you just feel very heavy inside it, it really happens and you know what to be honest with you i don't know how to deal with it yet um because it's an ongoing sort of like um experience that i have um but what i have been doing so far is that be- see because how you deal with it is very different you know from person to person um others might go to their friends talk to their friends um just to uh forget about their problems or you know to feel uplifted a little bit or uh maybe they 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 travel or maybe they you know what i mean <laughs> but as for as for me though <laughs> for me i actually allow myself to be alone. I don't know if this will work for other people, but it worked for me. So, if I feel depressed, I I stay away from my phone. I just stay in my room and I I don't want to see other people. For some strange reason, when I give myself space, the space that I need from away from external, you know, um people or things or yeah your job i feel better i guess it's because we live in a world where in everything is just things got to happen you got to do this that that fast 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 we forget about ourselves and we, for, we forget to give ourselves time to breathe so um that could be one thing that i can advise if you are feeling down maybe what you need if you know going to friends doesn't work talking to your parents doesn't work talking to your siblings doesn't work maybe you should just be alone you know just if, if not that, sometimes if you can be alone and not do anything else not even you, do, you don't even have to dive deep into it and say like you have to meditate or you have to reflect you know no man just like stare blankly into the whatever space is in front of you or your ceiling just stop your brain from 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 working maybe that might work for you you know absolutely and I, and i think uh one of the things that i learned so i know that mental health is going to be a part of my life for the rest of my life so acceptance is my number one step towards recovery um mm-hmm. or like dealing with the situation but 
I'm someone who likes to do one million things at once, like you said, snap, 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 keep going, keep going. And there were days uh, last year. Last year was a whole journey of self reflection and self awareness. And there were days last year where I didn't do anything, and I felt shit about it. And I spoke to my therapist about it as well, and I was just like, I just com- feel completely shit because I was not productive. I didn't do my work because I'm someone who had like seven jobs at one point last year, uh, being a student. So like, I felt super unproductive, and she was just like, Sharon. doing nothing is actually doing something and that just clicked something in my head and i was just like oh wait actually doing nothing and just being by myself and just like being a lazy snob for a day or two is not bad you know it's not bad at all like you can just relax and just like <laughs> you you can just like relax and be to yourself and that's completely fine um so i just wanted to get your thoughts on that and like i love that you're accepting the fact that yes you're still figuring out as well but the thing is acceptance that you're still figuring out is also a big step because most people mm-hmm. are just like sweeping it under the rug and that's when it comes to a point where they implode and that's what happened the first time I attempted to take my life i i imploded because i was just like sweeping and everything under the rug i wasn't facing my problems i wasn't acknowledging them and it just it just imploded so that's mm-hmm. why i advocated more and more because our little island uh even though we have such a tiny population we are actually one of the highest rated for in the suicide index So mental yes, health is actually a big, big problem uh, in Sri Lanka, which is why I'm pushing for it as well. And I and I just wanted to get your thoughts on it also. Um, so yeah, so I just want to ask no, Jesse also. Oh, hold on, yeah. I would like to um, congratulate you for you know, um, I think by talking about it now, you are becoming an inspiration to other people to also talk, start talking about it. I know the stigma is there but if you start talking about it and you see other people actually talking about it and they're not embarrassed about it then you know that'll just open things for them all the positive things could start flowing in but I would like to congratulate you for doing this Thank you thank you so much that means a lot especially coming from you but I oh. it's like the thing is the more we talk about it the more we normalize it and the more yeah. we normalize it and people hear it even the people who are just scared and their thoughts are in the back here as soon as they hear it those thoughts coming start coming back in front it's like oh wait that's how i feel oh wait yeah i actually need help oh wait i have to even if it's not help like i'm not here sitting down saying that you have to go for therapy therapy may not be the may be the uh, help for you like for you it could be talking about it with your close friends and family talking about it openly like actually acknowledging it could help you deal with the situation so mm-hmm. i really want to break the stigma by normalizing it and making it a conversation right so even yeah. recently so i did a i did a talk recently a public speech and uh, i put up like a little snippet of it on on uh, on instagram and there was i get called upon now for talking about mental health all of those things right so there was a bit of hate on the comments and the thing is for me I have two choices. I can either fight back and bite back or I can treat hate with compassion because hate normally comes from a place of them dealing with their own shit as well. Mm. So then when I was yeah. treating it with compassion and the comments kept going, he actually just acknowledged that this was an intellectual argument rather than a fight fight. Um mm-hmm. and then he was just like, "Hey man, no hate. Let's actually have this chat one day in the future." And I was just like, "Yeah man, let's do it. Like I'm down for an intellectual discussion because the thing is if if i go preaching and fighting for it and like screaming no one's going to hear me no one's going to hear oh. someone who screams about mental health um they won't absorb the message that you're trying to to convey as well don't this is don't fight fire with fire um that actually Absolutely. happened to me as well um i'm not sure if you've read it i'm not i'm not sure if we're friends on facebook but <laughs> i'm not one to actually post complaints or rants on facebook right cuz i i just don't do it it's um i find it waste of time. So it happened to me just right before they imposed curfew, right? Um but this is when everybody was very um anxious and you know the anxiety level was so high and people were getting scared because of the of, of the pandemic. So I hailed the cab because uh, you know like I my friend told me you know what why don't you stay for, with me for a couple of days? Actually now it's been 3 weeks. Um <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I've 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 overstayed my welcome. But um so I got a cab at Uber and uh it was a driver okay uh it, it was a lady driver not that it's very important in this conversation okay but just giving you a context of like what about women supporting women you know what i mean so when she saw me she spoke in singhalese to my companion 
And you know, I, I, I understand bits and pieces of Sinhalese. And she was like, does she understand Sinhalese? And then my, uh, my friend said, no. And then, and then she said, I'm sorry, sir, but we don't, uh, we don't accept Chinese hires. Right? Yeah. And I got that. Uh, and then my friend said, she's not Chinese. She's Filipino. She has passport. And then she said, no, but we don't accept foreign hires. Uh, management told us not to accept foreign hires. And, and then I, I understood that. So I said, um, excuse me. I live here. I'm not, I'm not a tourist. I live here. I work here. And then she said, no, 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 we don't accept foreign hires. And then she wanted us to get down like on the road. Like, so, you know, it's, it's different when you talk about racism, when you are not the, at the receiving end of it. But if you are at the receiving end of it, my gosh, like it, feel, it felt like my whole world just crumbled. Like for you to be asked to get out of the cab because of the way you look was just, I cried. I honestly cried. So I posted it. Uh, I posted the story on Facebook, but then at the end of the message, um, I said, I would like to be more understanding. And the, 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 the best way to deal with racism right now is, is, you know, just compassion and understanding because you don't know you also don't know why they're reacting that way. Did something happen to her that uh, that day? Did, um, or maybe she's just really concerned about her family, you know? Because if if you fight with them, then there's really there, no way no way to go. I mean, like there's nowhere to go. You won't understand each other. You just end up fighting. You just end up with bruised emotions after that, and it's such a waste of energy. And um, people appreciated it. Like you know, it wasn't. If it was an, another person, one person told me, they would have, you know, like cursed at the driver, posted the driver's details on, on social media. But I was like, no, you don't do that. You just tell, you just let people know that that happened to you and tell them that it could happen to you. And if it happens to you, this is a better way of dealing with it, you know? So it's, it's somehow related to what you said, like you, you, you not engage with people who, who, wrote hate comments about your your session so i just had to like um put it out there also that story because it's it's not the right time uh, actually there's no right time for racism ever period um absolutely yeah, and i'm that, glad you and, and i'm glad you put that out there because even now like i was having a discussion with um, another guest the other day and there is a direct correlation racism is everywhere but there's more of a direct co correlation when there's a pandemic and there's racism involved. So when there was the when there was H HIV, there was uh, racism and hate towards the LGBTQIA plus community. Uh, when there was SARS, there was uh, racism towards the Korean community. Um, and now when it's this, where it's anyone within like who looks a certain way gets a bit of race gets not a bit a lot of racism. So even my friend, she's an Australian, but her parents are Chinese. They migrated here a long time ago. She got spat on the road. And they told her, oh they, and the person screamed at her saying, go back to your country. We don't want your disease. Oh right. Um, and when I walk around sometimes, like I don't like Melbourne has been very, very kind to me. Like my life has changed because of Melbourne. But there's, they, there are people who are not as uh, emotionally intelligent or intellectual where when I walk around, it's just like, we don't want your brown ass in this country. Leave. Oh, wow. You know? And that comes to ignorance, that comes to ignorance, that comes to people who are less emotionally intelligent. And if we spit back, we are at the same level as them. That's mm -hmm. the problem. The, we don't stem the problem by being just like them. We stem the problem by being intellectual and teaching our future generations not to do that. And it's going to be a long term thing as well. So like every pandemic has always had racism, but racism is all, of it, all around. And I'm sorry that you had to go through that. Nobody has to go through that. But like you said, you practice empathy. Because that lady who was the driver, she could have been thinking about her family, her job, her job security. <laughs> uh, she could have been thinking, if I took this ride and my boss found out, would I get fired? You know, she yeah. could have been thinking about those. Things. We don't know what was in her mind. So I'm glad you were open-minded about thinking about that when you made those comments as well. Um, so Chassie, thank you so much for bringing that up. Like people don't really bring up those things, especially when it comes to live shows or talking in public. Um, so thank you so much. It's been an absolute honor, like talking to you and like getting to know you better. Um, and I'm glad like you brought that up. Like no one has ever asked you. I'm glad I was like one of the first people to ask you to like come and do this. 
Yeah. Um, but like, uh, before I let you go, I just have one question that I ask all of my guests. Uh, kindness is a big part of my life. My mom has really instilled kindness in me, and having it with zero expectations, like this, even this was like zero expectations. Like this show, I literally started it because I was feeling anxious. Um, and I was thinking if I felt this way, there should be other people say this way. And for me, kindness means helping one other person out there. So out of the 11 people that are watching now, if one person feels a little less lonely, our job's done. Um, and we help them get through their day just for like 40 minutes, you know? Uh, so yeah. I just want to ask you, what does kindness mean to you in your life? Wow. Kindness. It's giving without expectations. That's just it. You help without expecting anything in return. Um, you talk to someone not expecting him to, or that person to, or you compliment someone not expecting that person to compliment you back. So it's giving without any expectations. To me, that's kindness. Beautiful. Chessie, it has been an absolute honor getting to know you better. Uh, please keep doing the incredible things you're doing. Um, the internet is yours. I would like you to let us know if there's anything exciting coming on with you and TNL or if, uh, where we can find you in terms of social media and uh, any final thoughts. No, oh, thank you. know what, uh, Sharon, thank you so much for inviting me to do this. Uh, uh, it's, it's, I had fun. Um, thank you that there was a fluctuation of like, um, you know, uh, viewers as well. Hi, hello, hi, hello. <laughs> um, but you can you can follow us on uh, you know, TNL.now. That's our Instagram handle. Um, my my Instagram handle is right there on top there. Yeah. Sharon Vilautan with Chassie Cortez. Yeah, that's my Instagram. You can follow me there. I will share everything um, at the end of the day as well. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do this. Subscribe. <laughs> Hit that subscribe button. You know. <laughs> Um, what else? And yeah, we have a lot of uh, Instagram takeovers. As a matter of fact, is the reason why my I just came straight from the shower looking like this. Huh? You were dancing. I yes, I was dancing because Jess Suba just uh, took over our Instagram and taught us a dance hall uh, routine. So that actually really really worked out well for me. And we'll we'll have like a lot more. Um, uh, Instagram takeovers. Do you like how? Uh, do you do you know how to beatbox? No. <laughs> would you Would you like to learn how to beatbox? Uh, but uh, is is no an answer? Like, do I have an option? <laughs> or if if anyone <laughs> who's interested in learning how to beatbox or just enjoy watching a person beatbox, we have Pablo Quilombo, uh, uh who'll be um taking over Instagram on Monday. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, I actually have, I actually have a, a couple of questions. No, just one question. I'm just taking one question from uh, you. You asked me to post uh, like a sort of like a poll, right? Um, I oh yeah, sure. Question. Yeah, and I think this is uh, in in relation to what I do. <laughs> okay. Um, what? Okay, hold on. Okay. What makes a presenter? A very good presenter. Okay, so good I guess I, I guess yeah, I guess she's asking like, uh, what does it take to be a presenter? Um, radio presenter, radio personality. There's a reason why it's called radio personality because more than just your voice, more than just how you speak English or your mastery of of the English language, it means your personality as well. Uh, because what I noticed, um, okay, we're not trying to dig some some fights here but uh, what i notice is that you know um presenters have have the tendency of of becoming too comfortable with their jobs so um they tend to just stick to the uh routine of time check endorsements introduce a song or share a story radio presenters are your best friends we keep you company um, we want you to feel comfortable with us. We want you to be able to tell us your problems. Okay. We want you to be able to rant and, and, you know, and, and, and for us to be able to make you laugh, you know? So it's actually more than, because not everyone who speaks English can be a radio personality. Can we just like take that out of the equation? 
because <laughs> that is actually the misconception about radio presenters, radio personalities. Okay, um, so at the end of the day, our goal is for us to be able to get you out of a very bad mood. Okay, we want you to trust us. We want you to be able to tell us that hey, what you're doing is wrong or what you said is wrong. We want to have a, an intellectual conversation with you as well. So it's radio presenters, radio personalities are here to build relationships. Not just read endorsements, not just tell you what to buy, where to buy, or tell you what time it is, or tell you what day of the year, what day of the week it is. It's building relationships. So if you have that skill, you know, then by all means, go ahead, try and, and, and do radio or be an influencer on social media <laughs> and not just talk about the things that you were, you know, paid to say, <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah, there you go. That, that's, uh, that's my answer because I've actually been asked that question a lot of times and I, I never got to answer it be because I never had a platform like this, I guess. So yeah, there it is. It's out in the open. Radio Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And I think I agree with you. People follow the personality, not the shows. Like uh, if you look at sports, if you look at TV, more and more and more, like presenters are realizing that they themselves are a brand and wherever they go, people follow. So networks, everyone is identifying that as well, especially in Western countries. And I'm sure Sri Lanka will come uh, to that as well. Like when I tune into TNL, I'm looking forward to listening to Chassis. Let me, let me tell you that much. Um, but uh, <laughs> Chassis, before... <laughs> um, You're not just talking the, uh... Oh, Chassis, thank you for someone say that. <laughs> no. That's for real, right? Hashtag real talk. <laughs> No, for sure, it is. <laughs> uh, but I also want to say, Chassi, this conversation doesn't end here. Um, I would, when this becomes like a series or something, that I would love to have you back and uh, tackle more topical discussions uh, yes. and get your insight on it. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of people who want to be presenters, who want to be speakers, and they would love your insight on it. And I'm sure you would, um, you have enough to give. So I would love to have you on if you would love to as well. Of course. Um, but. <laughs> Until then, I would love to ask if you have any final thoughts. Oh, let's be kind to one another, please. Uh, because if you're kind to people and, and you help people without expecting anything, you will be rewarded tenfold. Trust me, you will be. So, Preach. thank you, Saran. Preach, Mike. <laughs> Dropped. Thank you so much, Jesse. You have been incredible. <laughs> have a beautiful day ahead of you. I cannot see what else you uh, do in your life as well. So thank you so much and have a good evening. Have a good evening too. Bye. Yeah, bye. So guys, that was Chessie. Uh, you can follow on her social media. I'll share it at the end of today as well. Uh, you can also check out TNL Now. They're doing awesome things with different different guests. Just to keep you guys company. They need a dancing session today. Like she said, they're going to do beatboxing in the future as well. Which is super cool. Um, I cannot beatbox or sing to save my life. So I'll, I'll yeah, that. That. Uh, but yeah, guys, I've slowed down the number of guests because we hit 100 guests yesterday. Um, and I've burnt out at this point because it's 100 engaging conversations that I had. It's not just talking nonsense. It's talking about real real things that is going on. So I've slowed down the number of guests. Um, I will be, because I had six guests today and today was three. Uh, I'll be taking a small break tomorrow and day after uh, so I can recover and do my university work, which has been on hold, and my part-time job work, which has been on hold as well. Um, but yeah, I'll be back on Monday. Thank you so much for tuning in and stay safe. Be kind.